Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm going to be talking about the episode from Season 2, The Graduation, when John Boyd graduates from our little community school on Walton's Mountain. If you're enjoying these videos, please do like and subscribe. If you'd like to know when I'm going to post another one, hit that little notification bell. In The Graduation, John Boy's graduating, and the family decides that those knickers he's been wearing since he was a young boy just aren't going to cut it for his graduation and for going away and being a college man. So they all pool their money and they take him uh, into Charlottesville to um, surprise him with getting him a new outfit for college. And then, unfortunately, our family cow, Chance, dies. So now there's this dilemma of not having the cash to get a new cow, which the family desperately needs, or John Boy being able to keep these clothes that were so kindly gifted to him. He wants to take them back. The family, you know, John and Olivia are like, no, no, we'll, we'll come up with another solution. When John Boy realizes there really is no other solution, people are all in need of cash. People don't necessarily want to always barter for the cow, so John isn't able to make that kind of a deal. John Boy makes the decision to take the clothes back and that he'll just deal with those knickers. However, another solution presents itself. Grandpa has an old tweed suit that he planned to be buried in. Grandma convinces him to donate that suit, and Olivia and Grandma work, uh, you know, full out to redo this retailer, this suit for John Boy, so that he does have a suit for graduation and to go off to college. Early on, when we see that Chance is indeed very ill and evidently can't get up, isn't eating, uh, you see a number of scenes where the cow is lying down. Uh, now people will probably ask, how did they do that? I have no idea. Uh, I know with, with horses and with a number of other sorts of animals, you can get them to lie down and then sort of keep them still. Uh, cows, I don't know that you can train cows, so but it's probably a similar thing where they, um, where they uh, help the cow to lie down and then encourage it to stay there. <laughs> At one point, the cow's eyes are closed because the cow is supposed to have passed. We... Uh, I don't know, again, how they do that, but it's a very clever cow. So uh, that, that's what I know about uh, dealing with cows. <laughs> Pretty much nothing. <laughs> in terms of locations, when we see the family take John Boy into town to get his new clothes, he goes right by this spot, which is actually, later on, a piece of uh, Boatwright University that we see. Also, the um, hospital where Mary Ellen goes to nursing school. So this is that area called Midwest Street. As they continue on, you see a little piece of that town square with the gazebo that is used multiple times for different cities in the Waltons. And also, you've probably seen it on various other shows that were filmed on the Warner Brothers lot. Marsha Woolery and John Boy had a, a little bit of a romance uh, from season one. Uh, he uh, was infatuated with Marsha Woolery, wrote poetry to her. Uh, Marsha was... Uh, uh, Tammy Beulah was a lovely actress and, and did a great job of playing a slightly vague and um, and confused young woman at times. Um, in this case, uh, I was uh, amused to see that they had autograph books and the seniors were having each other write in their autograph books. I remember that from being in junior high school myself, but I had no idea that the tradition went back as far as the um, 1934 graduating class clearly, and perhaps even before that. I, I always thought it was generational to my time. But in this case, you see the two of them writing in each other's books. I really enjoyed this uh, this crane shot that was used here going up into the treehouse. John Boy comes back, he hears a noise up in the treehouse. You see him, this would have been done with a crane, you see him climb up and then the crane is their position to be able to, for the camera to see John Boy and Elizabeth speaking. Um, my, uh, my sense is that then when they went in and did the close-ups, that was still done. They just repositioned the actors or the camera on the crane 
in order to get these close-up shots of John Boy and Elizabeth. Uh, so a wonderful use of movement to get this scene and this lovely interchange between John Boy and Elizabeth. When John Boy finds out from Elizabeth that Chance, the family cow, has died. In this episode, there are also a couple of examples of using the kitchen uh, for real. Uh, you see Mary Ellen here filling a pitcher of water. Normally water did not come out of that sink. So when we did these types of scenes, they had to literally attach a hose to that sink below and then, you know, allow water to run up and out. There's also a point where you see Olivia pulling out loaves of bread. So in this case, they were implying that the stove was actually functioning. Uh, because we do not see flames here, it probably was not actually hot at this point. But Michael does a lovely job of dealing with those two supposedly hot uh, loaves of bread with um, padding with, with um, uh, glove with mitts so that she wouldn't have been burning her hands. Later on in the episode, when you see the girls at the stove, you actually on the stove top do see the flames coming up through the burner on top. So in that case, obviously the stove would have really been hot. So at that point they had actually lit the, um, whatever the device was to be able to use the stove for real. In this case, there was, um, there was a chimney that came up from that stove up and vented all the way up through the top of the soundstage. So a very long piece of pipe in order to vent that stove out of the um, soundstage rather than into the soundstage where then we would have all been breathing smoke throughout the entire day. For several of these kitchen scenes, the angle from which we're shooting is where the wall behind the sink would be. So in this case, it's evident to me that they would have removed that wall so that the camera could be basically where the wall uh, behind the sink would be. That was a wall that was removed less frequently than um, some of the others. We, we often didn't have to remove walls in the kitchen because the space was big enough to move around. Probably the most commonly removed wall was the one over on the side where the exit um, out to the back porch would be. So where you would sometimes see grandma ironing, things like that. So that wall was the most commonly removed. The one behind the kitchen sink, not so much. The little boy who enters the schoolhouse when John Boy is there. That is, once again, Cammie Kotler's younger brother, Jeff, Jeffrey, uh, who played Pip in the, the uh, children's carol and then also did odds and ends of little background work in this case. He does have a few lines, so lovely to see Jeff again. In this scene, when you see John Boy go to the window and look out uh, first thing in the morning, you see that there are branches right outside this window. That caught my attention because when you are outside the house, although there is a tree in the front yard, those branches do not reach far enough to be right outside of John Boy's window, as you see here. So obviously John Boy's uh, bedroom was shot on the soundstage. Well, obvious to me because I was there. Um, but that was on stage 26 of the Warner Brothers studio. And so whenever they shot out the window, everything was on ground level. So any background, that you see any branches, things like that, were just uh, set dressing that was made uh, to basically disguise the fact that there was nothing outside that window. So they would put in some sort of a, a backdrop and then in this case, some extra branches. There's this beautiful scene between John and John Boy as they are bringing the new cow home. And John gives John Boy advice about going off to college and letting him know that although he will likely be teased for being a country boy, as John was when he went off to war, he'll be called a hick and a hayseed and things like that, but basically advises him to remember where he came from and his roots and that he has a family that loves him very much and just to not remember who he is and be proud of who he is. So I think it's a a lovely scene and a lovely message. As we start the final sequence of John Boy's graduation, director Alf Shaleen chose to start it with this humorous little moment of a young boy, P. 
peeing in the bushes and then his mother hurrying him off to the um, ceremonies. John Boy has been chosen as valedictorian of his graduating class and gives a wonderful speech about moving forward, journeying off into life. Uh, in this case, Rosemary Hunter, Miss Hunter, has been uh, featured quite a bit in this episode. Mary Claire Costello, who was with us for many seasons as Miss Hunter, was always such a joy to work with. Lovely actress, beautiful person. Uh, I was so pleased that they developed the storyline between her and Reverend Fordwick. You see John Ritter here with a small cameo in this episode as he speaks to the graduating class. Uh, so I, I loved that they had the two of them develop a romance and ultimately get married. I was personally moved to tears uh, as I listened to John Boy's speech about you know, what it took for these children, these now adults to get through high school and to have this opportunity, as John Boy does, to go off to college and what it took in terms of the love of a family and then the sacrifice. And speaking about, you know, his parents and the, see, choking up and the, the winter coats, his mother went without so that he could have books. It just brings to mind um, really all the sacrifices that that parents make on behalf of their children and how much, if we're smart, we appreciate and recognize that. So a beautiful message uh, in, I think, a lovely episode. And I'm going to sign off now because I'm a mess. Uh, it's funny, you know, you'd think that I watch all these episodes, I was part of them, and yet they're so beautifully done, beautifully written, directed, acted, that I can just sit back and be an audience. And I am moved by the stories that were created and the way they were crafted and edited and brought to life. And also then by my own personal memories of everything that went on behind it. So thanks for joining me for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons about John Boy's graduation. I'll see you for another episode of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and some more Ask Judy coming up. Thanks for watching.